everybody this is Nishi here and welcome back to our Icon Scout 3D series. In the last video we learned how to export a 3D asset from different angles. In this video I will show you how you can combine various 3D assets to create one full composition. And the theme that I have chosen for this composition is Halloween. So now let's head over to our Icon Scout platform and look for some nice spooky assets. So these are the three assets that I really like and I feel will work perfectly well together to create a nice composition which can be used on a website maybe as a part of your landing screen carousel or any other design case that you may deem appropriate. Now I've already downloaded the asset files of these but please make sure that you download the dot blend files of whichever asset you're downloading. But before proceeding further and designing our final composition, let me first introduce you to a few basic blender operations that we will be using throughout this video in order to create our scene. So let's first learn how we can scale, rotate and move our objects in blender. Let's open our blender and work with the default cube that we have over here. In order to move this cube, choose the move tool from your toolbox. You can use these handles to move your cube along a particular axis. You can also click here in the middle and move your cube about freely. You can do the same by using the shortcut G. But let's say that you don't want to move your object freely like this but want to confine its movement along a certain axis. Let's say you want to move your object along the X axis. In that case, hit G for grab and X to lock its position along the X axis. Similarly, hit G and Y to move your cube along the Y axis and G and Z to move your cube along the Z axis. Once these fundamentals are clear, you can apply the same for scaling and rotating your object. Just like the move tool, your toolbox has the scale and the rotate tool as well. Let's quickly have a look at these. You can click the outermost white circle here to scale your object uniformly and use the green, blue and the red handle to transform your object on particular axes. Just like the move tool, you have a shortcut for scaling and rotating as well. The shortcut for scale is S. Hitting just the S will allow you to transform your object uniformly, but hitting S and X will scale your object on the X axis only. Similarly, S and Y will scale your object along the Y axis and S and Z will scale it along the Z axis. It's the same principle for rotate as well. You can use the outermost white circle to rotate your object uniformly and the red, green and the blue curves will allow you to move them along particular axes. The shortcut for rotation is R. Just hitting R will rotate your object uniformly while hitting R and X will allow you to rotate your object along the X axis, R and Y along the Y axis and R and Z along the Z axis. As long as you remember these operations, you will be able to create whatever you want using as many assets as you want. Now that you know how to move, scale and rotate our object, let's go ahead and start composing our scene. So once we have our asset files ready and downloaded, all we have to do now is merge them into a single file. In order to do that, we'll first have to decide what our base file should be. Well, you can actually choose whichever file you want as your base file, but I can give you a few tips that can help you decide. For example, if you like the lighting of a particular asset over the other, then you can make that as your base file, so you don't have to change or adjust the lighting later. Or what I do is, I simply choose the file that has the most number of objects. So when I'm moving these objects into another file, I don't have to select too many, which reduces the room for error. So among these three assets that we have right now, I think I'm going to make this as my base asset file. So when we are moving objects from these two asset files, there are not too many for us to move. So let's go ahead and first open up the base file. Perfect. Before we proceed, let me show you a few more steps that we will be needing. This panel here on the top right is called the outliner. It will show you everything that is currently present in our scene. The white icons here represent collections. A collection is nothing but a group of objects. Let us now create a single collection for this entire asset. 
So it becomes very easy for us to distinguish between assets when we bring in the pumpkin and the cauldron. For that, all these single assets here will have to be combined into a single collection so that we can choose, move, scale or rotate the entire collection together. For this, make sure that you choose the scene collection and right click in the outliner and say new collection. Let's just rename this new collection to candle. Now choose all of these objects here by clicking and dragging onto the objects. Once the objects are selected, simply click and drag and drop them into the candle selection. Similarly, drag and drop the head one collection under the candle collection as well. Now when you turn the visibility of the candle collection on and off, you can see that the entire asset appears or disappears. So now we have one single collection for this entire asset. Let us not touch the lighting collection over here because it consists of the lights and the camera which is very essential for our composition. Now let's bring in our pumpkin into the scene. For that, let's choose scene collection and first create a new collection. Let's rename this to pumpkin. Now go to file and say append. Here choose the pumpkin.blend. And since it's just your objects that we need from this file, we are going to navigate to the objects folder and choose sphere and sphere 1. You can also press and hold shift on your keyboard and choose one file after another to select multiple files. Once you've selected both the files, just say append. You can see that under your pumpkin a sphere has just been added. And just below that, you can see that there's sphere 1 too. But unfortunately, we are not able to see those spheres in our asset file right now. So let's just move around in our viewport and let's try and see if we can spot our pumpkin. I can see something selected right here below my asset and I suspect that it is our pumpkin. Just a quick recap of how you can move around in your viewport. The middle mouse button will allow you to move about freely, the shift and the middle mouse to pan and your scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. You can also use these icons here on the right for panning and zooming and of course the gizmo here on top to move about freely. Now that we think we've found our pumpkin here, let's just go to the move tool and drag it all the way up here. Let's also bring it a bit forward so it doesn't hide behind our candle. I can see that it's really tiny right now. So let's just use the shortcut S on our keyboard for scaling and scale it up. You can decide the size of your pumpkin depending on the composition you want to create. For our composition, I feel both our cauldron and our pumpkin can rest nicely on this grass space that we have over here. But I can see that we'll probably have to delete some of these skulls as they are taking too much space and there's not enough room for our assets. But first, I think let me just move my pumpkin around and first make it sit properly on the base. I can see that it is colliding with the skull over here and I personally don't like the position of the skull too much over here so I think I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. To do that, just select the object you want to delete and hit delete on your keyboard. If you're unable to delete objects by hitting delete, just choose the object and hit X on your keyboard and now say delete. In order to choose multiple objects together, press shift and choose the objects you want to select. Uh, I think I want to even rotate this a little bit on the z-axis and I can do that by hitting R and Z so that it rotates only along the z-axis. Oh perfect! I think I like the position of my pumpkin now. And like I mentioned before, just make sure that you keep viewing and looking at your asset from different angles. So you can make sure that there's no collision happening with any other assets. Okay, now let's view our composition from our camera angle. And you can do that by pressing 0 on your keyboard. I don't really like the way my camera is set up right now and I really feel like I want to change it. In order to do that, let's bring this menu back by pressing N. From here, go to view and choose lock camera to view. You should see a red border which means that your camera is now active. Now all you have to do is just move around in your viewport and finalize your camera angle. I think I will go for a slightly frontal view like this. Perfect, I think I really like this and I feel that the composition works well too. 
Once you're happy with your camera angle, just turn this option off again. This is a very crucial step and if you miss this, then your composition is going to go all haywire because every time you move around, your camera angle will change and so will your composition. So just remember to check this off. If you want to learn more about setting up your camera angles more in detail, then please refer to our previous video. I think I'm just going to arrange my pumpkin a little better and maybe rotate it a little bit on the z-axis. Perfect. Now let's repeat the same process for our coltrane. But before that, just remember to save our file. I think I'm just going to call it candle 2 so my original file remains untouched. Alright, now let's go back to bringing in our cauldron. So you can start by creating a collection, appending the objects and then moving, scaling and rotating them to fit your composition. Great, now we have both our pumpkin and our cauldron in here. But I'm going to make just a small change here in our skull position. Choose both the objects by pressing shift and with the move tool just move it along the x axis. But make sure that you're viewing it from your camera view because otherwise it's going to be of no use. Um, I don't really like how the little part of the skull is sort of creeping in from here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. This looks great. Now let's just have a look at this from our rendered view. Um, I think we should rotate the skull just a little bit more towards us. So just hit R and Z to rotate it along the Z axis and move its position a little bit on the X axis. Perfect, I think I really like this. So let's just go ahead and render this out. As you render this out, you can see that instead of getting rendered as a transparent PNG, it is getting rendered with a grey background. But we need a PNG with a transparent background so we can use it for our respective design cases. So let's just cancel this render. You can do that by simply closing the window. In order to render out a PNG with a transparent background, let us navigate to our render settings here. In the render settings, scroll all the way down to film and under film choose transparent. You can see that as soon as you turn this option on, a checkered background appeared. Now you can be sure that the image that you render is going to be a PNG image with a transparent background. So let's just render this out and save this image. And there you go. You have a nice spooky composition now that you can use in your designs. So that's it for this video folks. In the upcoming video, I will show you how we can add little motion to our composition. So stay tuned. This is Nishi signing off. Thank you and have a wonderful day ahead.